Back in 2009, Peugeot launched its first compact crossover, the 3008, which I thought was the best wiener on wheels. Yes, it was good to drive, and yes, unfortunately, it looked like a big fat wiener. Fast forward seven years, and we've got the second generation 3008, which fortunately no longer looks like a wiener, but like a French dish. According to a 19-page long press release, the new Peugeot 3008 is a perfect answer to customers' expectations, a source of emotions and pleasure, success measured by jealous looks of other people, an escape from everyday life, new value, emotions corresponding with the car's line, a feeling of power and animal-like aggression, solid light, and I know you're not listening to this bollocks and I'm only on page 5, but let's forget about all the corporate sweet talk and look at the car. Doesn't the new Peugeot 3008 look not only better than its predecessor, but also good in general among its competitors? And that's before we look in the boot, which you can open swinging your foot under the bumper. Boot volume is 520 liters, almost 90 more than in the previous generation. Depending on the market and trim level, you can order optional mini or full-size spare. There are no shopping bag hooks, but there is a 12-volt socket and levers to fold back seats. Once backrests are folded and double floor is in its top position, we also get a flat cargo area. And I could lock the car with a press of a button on the boot lid. The only problem I see back here is lack of seatbelt guide, so belt will slip behind the seat. But there is good legroom and headroom. I'm 175 centimeters tall, the driver's seat is set to my driving position, and I'm fine back here, even in the middle where the floor is flat. Rear passengers also get AC vents and a 12 volt socket. There are cup holders in the armrest, and there's a ski hatch as well. I didn't expect this in a French car. And what's it like in the front? A quick tour of this very elegant interior. Okay, so we've got a 12.3 inch screen in front of me. There is big sat nav, there are these rings, and on, these, on one ring is your speedo, and on the other one, your rev counter. And I really love this detail. The steering wheel looks like from an airplane, I guess. And the whole cockpit looks very airplane-like. Okay, so there is the 8-inch display here with um, your media, your air conditioning. Now, I know some of you don't really like this air conditioning business here, but get used to it. It's going to be like this in more and more cars. Satnav, your general car settings, your phone, your Miralink Apple, Apple CarPlay. Now, Miralink doesn't work in uh, all markets. For example, in Poland, it doesn't work, so I can't show it to you. And Apple CarPlay, I don't have an Apple phone with me. And then there are the moods. You can have a relaxing mode or a boost mode. And if you choose one of those, the lighting changes, the smell changes, the engine sound changes, that kind of stuff. I think it's useless, but, you know, whatever tickles your fancy. On the practical side, there is induction charging, wireless charging. So even though there is a 12 volt socket and a USB port down there, you don't really need them if your phone can be charged wirelessly. Glove box, not very big, quite small actually. But, under the armrest, storage is huge. I mean, look, I'm down here, down to my elbow, and a fire extinguisher fits in there, okay? This is how big this place is, sorry. It was like that, I didn't, I didn't break anything. No? Yeah. Two cup holders. Now, it's nothing extraordinary in a normal car, but we're talking about a French car. Uh, door pockets, door bins, again, place to store your water and stuff and I just love the design it's very tasteful very modern very Audi like dare I say if this Peugeot 3008 drives half as good as it looks then Peugeot has a winner on its hands
So, how is the new Peugeot 3008 to drive? Like its predecessor, it's actually quite good, but the other one, the previous generation, had this fancy rear beam stabilizer contraption. This car doesn't have it. This one is on the new Peugeot modular platform, which is called E something too. Anyway, this modular platform means that, first of all, it's easier to share components between uh, different cars. Secondly, the cars can be lighter and therefore more fuel efficient. It's hard to say at the moment whether this car is really fuel efficient or not. I've driven it for uh, maybe a couple dozen kilometers. But generally speaking, I feel that it's a very good car to drive. Now, excuse the noise from the tires right now. I'm on winter tires and I'm driving on some muddy surface. I mean, it's asphalt, but there is mud on it because of uh, the agricultural machinery in the area. Sharp turn. ESP intervened just for a second there. It's a very good car to drive. I don't hear any suspicious noises coming from the suspension. The damping is good. In French cars, what's usually the case is that they're either too soft or the damping just sucks. Or both, sometimes. And in case of this 3008, they've done the right thing. They've done it properly. Okay, it's not BMW damping, but for a compact crossover, which you can buy for, I don't know, I'll actually have to tell you in a minute, but for a compact crossover, this is very good damping. And recently I've tested the new Tiguan and Volkswagen Tiguan had, well, some kind of noises coming from the suspension. This car doesn't. And it's a Peugeot. How's the steering? Very precise, very direct, although it's also quite light. But uh, small corrections and the car does what it's supposed to do. So great job, Peugeot. The driving position is good. The steering wheel, it's flattened on top and on the bottom. I suspect this might be Peugeot's response to uh, customer complaints that the steering wheel actually obstructs visibility, obstructs some of the information on the dials. I like this cockpit design with dials on top of the dash, but I understand it's not everyone's cup of tea now with the flattened bottom and top of the steering wheel there's really no obstruction whatsoever you can adjust what you see on the dials I mean there's obviously always a speedometer and sometimes a rev counter sometimes your fuel economy your sat nav if you want the fancy rings on the side you can't see your fuel economy which I think is silly but that's how they designed it still there is something for everyone you can even have something which looks like your classic analog dials even though they're digitally displayed. This car shares some of the switch gear with other Peugeots and Citroëns, like the stalks here, for example, some of the buttons here and there, but I focus mainly on these buttons here and they make this cockpit look modern, upmarket, and yeah, I totally buy this, I don't know if it's a bit of Audi design or maybe Scandinavian, a bit of BMW i3 as well, although this is not actually fabric, this is plastic, I think. Still, very nice. Is it fast? Mm, let me put the sports mode on and see what it does. Okay, so it, sh it downshifted for me. but it doesn't feel very fast, or loud, or sporty, or whatever. I mean, yeah, it will accelerate maybe a bit faster than normally, but it's not night and day. Uh, you're fine driving in your normal drive mode. Above 120 km per hour, by the way, there is some wind noise here around the A-pillar. But again, this is to be expected from a compact crossover. 
Would I buy the Peugeot 3008? Well, based on what I've experienced so far, I probably would. I just have to look at the price list. Prices of the new Peugeot 3008 start around 23,000 euro for access trim with 1.2 130 horsepower petrol engine. The cheapest diesel will set you back 28,500. This Allure 1.6 165 horsepower automatic model costs 31,750 euro plus seven or eight grand worth of options. You can have your 3008 with adaptive cruise control and lane assist. These white leather seats with massage function don't come cheap either. Then there is Satnav, a 360 degree camera. I can compare the new Peugeot 3008 to the German competition, not only in terms of how solid it feels, but also in terms of the price list. You can spec your pug like a Tiguan, but it's going to cost you dearly. And how do you like the new Peugeot 3008? Let me know in the comments below. Share, rate and subscribe. New episodes every Friday. And if you like what I do, help me on Patreon or PayPal. Links in the description below. Thanks for watching. And until then, check out some of my other reviews, which are linked somewhere around here. Somewhere. Yeah. Click him. Click him. Click him.